welcome to another of our Keep It Simple series. My name is Dr. J. Lim. Today we'll be talking about acute versus chronic urinary retention. Now urinary retention is a very common uh, situation that can occur to you and for whatever reasons uh, you have a full bladder, you go to the toilet and you try to void and you find that you cannot actually pee out anything from the bladder at all when everything was fine the previous day. Now this situation worsens and therefore you can feel fairly uncomfortable if you do not get um, these conditions looked at and treated appropriately. So let's get cracking and look at some of the reasons and what we can do when you have encountered these situations. Now uh, we'll go through a bit about um, what the bladder actually does and tell you a bit of the difference between the various types of urinary retention and of course usual things happens we'll go through the various causes the treatments that we can do for you as doctors and urologists and some of the things that can potentially happen even after treatment is initiated now the bladder itself is actually a big strong piece of muscle that you have seated in the pelvis or in the lower part of your abdomen. It basically works as a storage reservoir and it allows you to store urine as it continuously being uh, produced by the kidney uh, as you go along in doing your daily activities. And so much so that when it reaches a point in time, usually around 300 to 400 mils in uh, women and men respectively, then they send a trigger to your brain that tells you I've got to go to the toilet to actually avoid. Now the pictures on the top hand side corner looks uh, basically is a ultrasound picture of how your bladder looks like. Contrary to popular belief, when the bladder is actually uh, uh, in its normal state, when it's uh, semi-full, it's actually more of a rectangular in shape rather than an oval shape that we usually draw. And ultrasound of the bladder is a very, very useful tool for urologists like myself because we actually use it to figure out how much urine you have in your bladder right now. Um, the function of the bladder is very important because it provides us a storage location that is low pressure so much so that the fluid inside is um, uh, stays in the bladder without uh, the risk of going up to the kidney as it contracts. Now, there are only a few reasons as to why the bladder can't empty properly and if you basically were to separate um, the urinary bladder into two components, you might actually uh, understand it somewhat be uh, better. Now, the blue box basically is, is surrounds the bladder itself. That's where the urine gets made from the kidney and it's stored inside while waiting for it to be full and also the right environment for you to urinate. Now, a bladder itself, like I said, is a muscle. What the job of the muscle is supposed to do is basically is to start contracting. So one of the main, main reasons as to why things don't get uh, working normally is because the bladder itself either can't contract or does not contract adequately. Uh, the other situation that it can happen is when it actually is working fine and it contracts very, very, very well, except that there is something blocking the outdoor or the outlet of the bladder. Which brings us to the red color blocks that you see uh, on the lower part. That is when basically when you have a uh, obstruction to the uh, door going out to the bladder and this is most commonly due to the fact that you have big prostate that's actually um, obstructing um, the bladder outlet. Other causes where you can occur is when you have a blood clot for whatever reasons you're, uh, you are bleeding in the bladder, blood clot sits on the outlet of the bladder itself and when the bladder tries to squeeze out and it actually acts as a plug to let urine to prevent urine from actually flowing out of your body. Um, there are other possible reasons as to why suddenly you can't pee. A very common one is if you were to take some medications, particularly cough, uh, cough mixtures medications or antihistamines. These are medications that actually will let you retain urine a bit more easily, particularly if you are of the elderly age group. Um, naturally, if you have an obstruction like due to some damage in the sphincter or a strictures in the urethra, these are some of the common reasons as to why you may be having a blockage uh, that prevents urine from going out. There are two main kinds of urinary uh, retention, that is the acute one and the chronic one. The acute one, as the name suggests, happens very, very suddenly and it can you one moment you could be doing your own thing next thing you know, in the next three hours you find that for whatever reasons you start having this sensation whereby the bladder is full uh, you try to go to the toilet and you can't so that is actually quite simple enough and self-explanatory the interesting ones probably more the chronic urinary retention 
chronic urinary retention is a situation whereby you hold on to a bit more urine a bit more urine a bit more urine over a long period of time and what it does is that it actually stretches your bladder over weeks months and perhaps even years so much so that you actually don't have the sensation that the bladder itself is full acute usually acute occurs suddenly and because of the fact that the bladder is not well stretched it is a very painful condition and most of the time you'll be able to tell a doctor where exactly is the problem that the fact that you cannot pee um, you may see some bloody urine or cloudy urine before the condition actually occurs and this could be a sign telling us doctors as to what is the cause of your acute urinary retention um, if you were to have a general anesthesia or took some medication these can also trigger urinary retention to occur but the good thing is they are usually short-lived once you get the necessary attention and you get the necessary treatment generally they can be fairly easily resolved. The chronic ones are a bit harder to find and if you don't know anything about it you probably wouldn't even know that you may be suffering from chronic urinary retention. It generally occurs if you have uh, on a, a particular history like a neurogenic bladder or the fact that you have a big prostate in the elderly or for ladies uh, it can occur insidiously over a long period of time that you know, don't really know that you have this condition. Um, you may actually absolutely be feeling comfortable about it because you actually didn't know anything was wrong. Some of the signs and symptoms could be the fact that you'll be having recurrent urinary tract infection or the fact that because the bladder is always full, you find yourself having to go to the toilet very frequently because not a lot of the bladder is being emptied every time you go to the toilet. A lot of it actually gets stays behind, more and more gets stays behind and the bladder stretches as times go by. And if you find that yourself having some of the symptoms above, you may want to uh, have a look with, uh, have a chat with your doctor or your urologist on um, these few aspects and wonder and talk about whether you potentially could be having a chronic urinary retention. So this is basically what happens. Um, a better way to explain it uh, would be to look at the bladder as a balloon structure. Now you have a small balloon that you um, blow up and basically what um, it does is that when the balloon itself you let go, there's a lot of good uh, elasticity in the bladder that actually pushes everything out just like in a balloon it pushes all the air out and it becomes nice and collapsed as it is and when you blow it out again there's enough um, elasticity or rubbery reflexes that allows it to contract now obviously this is a very simplistic view of things but generally it is a, a easier way to understand how the bladder itself works now if you were to insist on blowing the bladder bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and you do it on a regular basis like say daily for months or weeks and end. What happens is that the, the, the elasticity in the bladder itself becomes a lot weaker. All right? Not just that, the volume itself becomes bigger. Uh, it becomes the biggest volume. And when you let go, and if the bladder still works, you may not be able to let go of all the air. And this could be a combination of the fact that the elasticity of the bladder is not as good, or the fact that you have a obstruction on the outside that prevents you from emptying the balloon fully. So what happens if you do this over months and years and years and years and if everything in the body, things break down. When you have a decompensated bladder, basically what happens is I always tell my patient is it essentially goes from being a balloon rubbery structure to more like a, a, a supermarket plastic bag that we have. It's still big, it still holds a lot of stuff, but when you take it full of air and you open it up, nothing gets squeezed out because it is no longer working in the way that it's supposed to be, which is acting like a big muscle and push everything out. When you open up a, a bladder that's decompensated, what happens is the bladder may be full, but you lost the ability to push everything out even if there are no obstruction or you remove the cause of the obstruction. And we do not want that because this is a long-term chronic condition. It means that your bladder is severely damaged and you may potentially lose the use of your bladder forever. If it does happen 
and you feel that something's going on wrong and you present to the doctors, let's talk about what we doctors can do immediately for you. And one of the hallmark things that we do immediately for patients who are in urinary retention is to put in a catheter. A catheter is basically a rubbery tube that we can use to drain um, urine. They are different types and sizes and shapes, different materials, and they are used uh, differently. So we so these are some of the examples of the catheters that doctors can actually put in for you through the urine tract into the bladder to help you drain out or bring out all the urine that's actually stuck in your bladder. There are many, many sizes and shapes of, blood, uh, of the urinary catheters and they can be made of different materials. Regardless of the kind of material that you use, generally they can stay in the body for at least one month. So generally, if you have a doctor that puts a, a catheter for you, rest assured that it can stay down there for quite a period of time, up to one month, uh, while you seek help um, to find out what's the root cause of your problems. Um, different sizes, different shapes, and different materials, uh, and they all have a few common features. For example, the most of them would have a balloon over here, uh, and for another one, it's the same thing over here. And what this balloon does is that we blow it out, and it helps anchor the balloon in the bladder so that when you stand up, everything will drop down. Um, um, as you walk away. So these are some and they, they have all have little eyelets over here and holes over here that basically lets the urine come out that we will connect to a urine bag on the next uh, slide that I will show you some of the kind of urine bags that we have. And uh, you don't have to change them especially when they are just put in unless they are blocked or unless you have a lot of urinary infection while you are on these tubes. Similarly, like the catheters itself, we will then connect a urine bag to the catheter and they are different sizes and shape depending on your needs. Now, urinary retention can occur to a wide spectrum of age group. You can be basically on the elderly side or you can have young working adults um, that have acute urinary retention and there are different bags that suit different kind of social settings that you may require. Now on the left hand side over here, you basically will see a, a IDC bag that is on the big side and that's generally used for those that need to stay in hospital uh, and doesn't need to go to the toilet that often. These are usually about two liters in volume and that's usually good for an entire day and you need to only empty it once. How you do this emptying is basically there's a little tap at the end of the bag. What you need to do is just walk to the toilet push, uh, put that back over the toilet bowl, push it, empty all out, basically close the tap and there you go, you're good for another day. Now if you're on the younger side and you need to work and the last thing that you want to is basically to have a urine bag that's hanging out in the open for everybody to see and in situations like this, a leg bag might actually be a bit more appropriate for you. The downside of this leg bag is that they're smaller capacity usually around 500 mils, but the good thing is you can wear them over your pants, over your jeans, and nobody will need to know that you're having a urinary tube. And for other people that you that really don't want to walk around with a um, urine bag and they actually still have sensation of their bladder intact, you can even put a flip-flop valve that basically an open and close valve that you can actually um, do it yourself. What happens is when you feel that the bladder is full, you just simply walk to the toilet, flip over the valve and point the valve towards the toilet bowl, your bladder empties, close it back up again and basically you can then go off to continue your day without much of an interruption. So depending on what, so depending on what exactly that you need that you require, um, we can tailor the kind of different tubes and, and the kind of bags that you want. Now, naturally, there are some potential complications that can occur when you have to have a catheter put in. But having said that, most of the time you're feeling uncomfortable, so much of the fact that you would have to deal with the complications because um, not, not putting an IDC in these situations would be even 
uh, uh, worse of the results. Some of the things that can occur are basically like um, uh, false passages. False passages, if you look at the bottom left, right hand corner pictures, it's when the cube doesn't go into the place that it's supposed to do. And generally, uh, this does not occur very often, particularly if it's done in a uh, correct manner. Your doctors would be well trained to do these kind of procedures and generally uh, doctors in Singapore and around the regions with proper trainings um, all do very well and are all very expert at putting a catheter into the bladder for our patients. Um, decompressive hematuria, that is another situation that can happen. Uh, this happens when your bladder is particularly very big and um, it ha occurs when you actually delay presentation to seeing a doctor uh, early enough and what happens is it actually stretches the bladder a bit too much. Uh, when you put in the tube and let all the urine comes up, um, bleeding can actually occur and there are some tricks that you can, that the doctors will know how to deal with it but certainly be some be something it is something that you may be seeing and not to be too alarmed uh, particularly when it happens to you um, infection and blockage of the catheter can occur especially if you have a catheter in for more than six weeks or so you might begin to see a bit of um, protein or sluffy stuff that's seen along the tubing a lot of patients mistake that for pus that's not the case um, it's happened because it's an irritation of the balloon you recall seeing and it rubs on the urethelium of the lining of the bladder and it actually comes comes out as slough. You might see a bit of that. Sometimes this slough can actually block up the catheter itself, leading uh, you to have a situation whereby you have urinary retention even though you have already IDC put in. Uh, in situation like this, a gentle flush or exchange um, would be all that is needed to be done. And when it basically blocks up situations, uh, a lot of men tells me that even where everything seems to be working on well, you may actually also encounter a bit of leak from the catheter around the catheter when uh, you leak out, when you can feel that your blood is contracting. These things can happen uh, and we basically, if it does, um, go back to your doctor, have a chat with them and see how, how what we can do. Um, to actually reduce all these um, complications from happening because there are certainly tips and tricks um, that your doctor is aware that can make the situation a lot better while you're having this urinary catheter put inside your bladder. Now with that, probably we'll come to the end of today's session. Now I hope it gives a brief uh, overview of what do you expect to have uh, when you need to have a urinary catheter put in for yourself. Uh, in most of the situations, we should be able to remove the catheter after three to four days, and I certainly hope that's the case for you. For others, people who may potentially require catheters um, to be placed for a long time, uh, at least you know that some of the various options out there that can reduce the number of times that you need to take it out and put a new one in because of um, some of the different materials out there that allows you to put in catheter up to three months, and that essentially means a four times a year change compared to the 12 times a year change that you might otherwise require. Now with that, we will come to the end of today's talk. I hope you've learned something new. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you again.